In this session, I'll cover some of the basic layout and settings so we can begin using Inkscape as soon as possible. From the View menu, I have the default layout selected. The Inkscape window contains various areas designated for specific program functions. At the top is the menu. The operations are conveniently grouped according to their functionality. The command toolbar contains commonly used commands such as open, save, cut, copy, and paste, undo and redo, various zoom levels, and a few other items we'll use later. Hovering the mouse over an icon displays a tooltip indicating its function. The toolbox contains the tools that are available. If you have a small display, all the items may not fit. This double arrow icon indicates there are additional tools. In this case, I have four that don't fit into the toolbox. and You can access those from this pop-up menu. The tool options bar displays below the command bar. As you select different tools in the toolbox, these items will change to reflect various options for that tool. The color palette displays across the bottom you can use the scroll bar to access all the colors in the selected palette. You may adjust the display of the palette by clicking the very small triangle off to the right. This pops up the palette menu. You can adjust the size of the color blocks and their width. whether they have a border or not, and the wrap setting. Depending on your size and width settings, you may see multiple rows of blocks there. You also have access to different color palettes from this menu. Let's take a look at Tango icons. You can see different color blocks displayed there. For this series, I will stick to the Inkscape default color palette. The status bar displays below the palette, and this will give helpful information based on the selected tool. You'll see hints for various actions that you may take based on that tool. Any of the toolbars may be turned on or off from the View menu, Show, and Hide. I have all of the toolbars turned on, and you'll probably want to leave your settings that way as well until you see which features you use most often. Canvas is this background that surrounds the page. You have a ruler on the left and at the top. Those are turned on or off by using the keyboard command Control R. Dialogues are a series of docs or panels that display to the right of the canvas. Currently, I'm displaying those as icons. This is the Align and Distribute doc or panel. And when I click the icon, it pops that out. Since I have limited space here, I choose to just display those as icons. This button will close the dock and remove it from the display. This is the one that minimizes it or collapses it to the icon. There isn't an option like we had for the toolbars to show or hide them all from one location. They're sort of spaced out throughout the menus. For example, this fill and stroke panel is located in the object menu. We see it here, fill and stroke. The dialogues have keyboard shortcuts that all begin with shift and control, then a single letter. F in this case for fill, fill and stroke, shift, control, F. An object panel can be opened by shift, control, O. Another useful one is the layers panel. And you see the shortcut displayed here as well. That's a shift, control, L. And available also from the layer menu. Another one you'll probably want to turn on right away is the Undo History. That is 
shift control h h for history and that one is available from the edit menu since i choose to collapse my panels or dialogues if you want to do the same you'll have to make sure you have some settings in the preferences this toolbar icon here will allow you to edit the preferences also from the edit menu preferences or shift control p you'll find those settings in the interface section down at the bottom dockable style I have mine set to icons only the other options are text only or icons and text but this is what displays here in this narrow column if you put text in there it will display vertically and it's very difficult to read when you have a lot of panels in there so I set that to icons only icons and text is a format that displays there if you do make these changes you have to close Inkscape and restart it for them to take effect other options you may find useful the toolbox icon size I have this set to large that controls the icons over here control bar icon size that would be this bar here the control options or tool options bar you can set the size of those icons and the remaining toolbars you can set those here all three of those require a restart as well another setting that I find useful is found in behavior scrolling I like to zoom the image window using the scroll feature of my mouse you can set that option here mouse wheel zooms by default with that box checked scrolling the mouse zooms the image window and holding down the control key while you scroll actually scrolls the image window up or down if you leave this unchecked it will work in the reverse manner another option I check is mouse move pans when the space is pressed so holding down the space key and dragging with your mouse will pan through different areas of the image window there isn't an OK or a save option here when you change these settings they're automatically saved and then you just close out this window remember to restart the program if you made any changes to settings that require that and then the last toolbar here off to the right is the snapping toolbar this controls how objects in the image area snap together or are attracted to each other or to guidelines or the grid we'll see more of that later now that you have a basic understanding of the program operation and layout We'll begin creating things in the next session.